This is KGW News at 5. Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. On this inauguration day, the 46th President of the United States, Joe Biden, takes the reins and delivers a powerful message of unity and healing in his inaugural address. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris took the oath of office today beside the U.S. Capitol, two weeks after a violent insurrection there. The contrast was stark. Because of the pandemic, there were no huge crowds packing the National Mall. Facing a field of flags instead of supporters who could not safely be there, President Biden was realistic about the challenges ahead and committed to fighting for all Americans. This is our historic moment of crisis and challenge. And unity is the path forward. And we must meet this moment as the United States of America. If we do that, I guarantee you we will not fail. We have never, ever, ever, ever failed in America. When we've acted together, After this morning's ceremony, President Biden signed a number of executive orders targeting Trump immigration policies and rejoining the Paris Climate Accord. We know a lot of you were glued to your screens this morning watching the inauguration. Tim Gordon checked in with people, including some political observers, to get their reaction. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. A momentous day as the new administration of Biden and Harris is sworn into power. A much smaller crowd, but a very powerful event just the same. There was so much about this uh, inauguration, I think, that was historic. KGW political analyst Len Bergstein feels the inauguration had a healing quality for himself and a nation that needs it. So Biden and Harris are really of the moment, and I think they're able to kind of take the memories that we have of this uh, the pandemic and of the uh, kind of insurrection and put it in its proper perspective of uh, optimism, that we can overcome it with this sense of unity and purpose and, uh, and truthfulness. This was a day where snow flurries gave way to sun, shining on the new president of the United States. A lot of you were watching. I think the sun is shining for a reason today. I'm excited and um, just interested to see how it turns out. Um, you know, I think he's really going to step it up. I'm hoping that uh, Biden will bring everybody together. Um, that's what I've really been missing the last four years. I was uh, tearing up when I was seeing Kamala swearing in. I was like, wow, you know, I've been rooting for her from the very beginning. An American milestone, Kamala Harris, the first woman and first person of color sworn in as vice president. Politics doesn't have to be a raging fire, destroying everything in its path. As for President Biden's speech, it got high praise from many observers, but it got a tougher analysis from political science professor Jim Moore's students who compared it to Biden's stump speeches. And they heard a lot of the same things. Um, you know, unity was a big thing. Uh, they almost wanted to make it into a drinking game. There were so many unities in there. Today, um, But they also were struck by the lack of specifics. Of Professor Moore says he doesn't know if calls for unity will get Joe Biden a honeymoon period to get specifics he wants accomplished. But for some people, the presidential transition is enough for today. Oh my gosh, no, I'm so happy. Are you kidding? This is so exciting. I feel like there has been such a weight lifted. Tim Gordon, KGW News. A powerful moment during the inauguration ceremony today as young poet Amanda Gorman recited her poem titled The Hill We Climb. Gorman says her poem came to life after the violent mob took over the Capitol earlier this month. For there was always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. But the globe. Gorman is only 22 years old, the daughter of a single mother, a Harvard graduate, and a former National Youth Poet Laureate. She's also the youngest known inaugural poet in American history. 
In lieu of the traditional Inauguration Day parade, a live stream virtual parade across America celebrated the new presidency. It featured entertainers and celebrities and special people to represent every state, including Portland doctor Jason Campbell, who you might know as the TikTok doc. We first met Jason last spring when he started posting dance videos to cheer people up. Today, he also had a message of unity. If I can leave you with anything today, it's the idea that we need to be together apart. We need to be safe, we need a distance, but we also need to still be together. Now is not the time to, to be isolated. It's time to reach out, a time to ask for help, a time to be there for others, to give help, to lend a hand. He wasn't the only the Oregonian side featured side. in today's virtual parade either. It also highlighted members from the American Side Saddle Society in Eagle Creek. Right now we're following protests on Portland's east side. A group of anti-police protesters met at Revolution Hall in southeast Portland and they marched to the Democratic Party offices in northeast. People smashed windows there and vandalized the building. The group has already had a few scuffles with police. Officers say some of the demonstrators threw objects at them. Police confirm they made multiple arrests. We're tracking other demonstrations planned for late tonight and we'll keep you updated. Not knowing exactly what to expect, I was fully ready to respond to any kind of news that might come our way saying that it was just a little too dangerous. Amid today's ceremony and celebration, to say security was tight would be a huge understatement. And we're not just talking about D.C. Remember, across the U.S., state capitals were warned to be prepared for possible extremist violence. Thankfully, those fears didn't come to fruition. That said, in Salem, the fear has already had an impact. Here's Maggie Vespa. For the first time ever, Oregon's Capitol building is braced with barriers, fencing, and we're told an invisible perimeter of SWAT teams and state police. It's been that way for days leading up to Wednesday's inauguration. This in light of warnings that far right extremists were planning to incite violence here and at other state capitals across the country. As of Wednesday afternoon, all was quiet. It's been a, a nice relief. It has been a relief. Mike Ritter owns Ritter's Housemade Foods. It sits just a few blocks from Oregon's capital. That means the restaurant had a front row seat to last month's violence when a group of violent extremists forced their way into the building during Oregon special session. Same story on January 6th when a crowd gathered outside the state capitol, seemingly in solidarity with the insurrection in D.C. To put it bluntly, the warnings about more violence on Wednesday frightened Ritter's staff and customers. Well, I tell you, it's, it was really concerning. What I've gone into it really is just a, a contingency mode. We're going to do business as usual, but be ready to tailor the schedule throughout the day. This for a business that's already taken a 70% hit during the pandemic. And clearly Ritter's not alone. Earlier this week, KGW talked to Jonathan Jones, owner of Epilogue Kitchen and Cocktails in Salem. He says members of the far right group, the Proud Boys in Salem for these rallies have harassed him and vandalized his business. And our parent network, NBC News, reports small businesses in the nation's capital are also struggling to survive amid threats of more violence there. A restaurant owner was quoted saying people, including food suppliers, can't drive around D.C. anymore because the roads are blocked. Wednesday afternoon, Ritter was hopeful that the fear is subsiding. And with time, things turn to normal. Um, people are really resilient. Our customers are super resilient. Helping matters. After delaying proceedings for two days, Oregon lawmakers will be in Salem Thursday morning to begin a new legislative session. Maggie Vespa, KGW News.